Good morning YouTube and welcome back with my enthusiastic mask of YouTubeness of my entire body. Anyway, I'm back. Yeah, sort of. Uh, do I need to explain anything? Nah. Nah. Gonna keep everything private. But just a quick thank you to all the friends who contacted me over the last couple of months. Just making sure one's well-being is uh, as it should. So thank you very much for them. You know who you are. I don't need to spell it out. But anyway, on to today. As you can see, roads may be icy. Two degrees, it was one degree when I set off. And I'm going to... I'm just try and turn this around, I think. I'm going to uh, Kendall KTM. <coughs> Triple D. Triple D Motorsport, Kendall. Got to take my bike in. Got a couple of issues, not afraid to say. Uh, but if you find yourself requiring some work being done make sure you get the right dealership that's all I can say I think every brand has their issues regardless of whether you buy a £30,000 Panigale or a £3,000 Honda every bike has their issues the same Anyway, three issues I've got with this bike. Uh, one issue has been ongoing and it's been really irritating me. Well, there's two, but it's, they coincide with each other. And uh, one of them seems trivial, and that is the headlamp hit um, is skywards. It really is high. And what that does, it dazzles every bugger when you're um, riding in the dark, which quite often I do. Because I'm a seasoned all-round biker, I don't go around just when the sun comes out, even though it's sunny today. Um, so I get to notice these things, and it's important that you do ride your bike throughout the whole year. One, you get the practice in, or you get the feel of your bike all year round, and you're not so rusty when it comes to bringing your bike out, when the sun's nice and shiny. But also, um, you get to know issues that wouldn't really arise unless you're riding it all year round or in the dark you wouldn't know whether your lights work properly or not or the aim's all right anyway so that being said aim's very high and you think it would be quite easy to adjust but apparently it's a pig to adjust uh, because of the angle of dangle you got to get your tool in there's a pun there in itself but the angle of dangle you got to get your tool in to adjust it so rather than me faff around with it, I'd sooner have someone who has a little bit of expertise and knows where to stick the tool and uh, adjust, adjust the hand, headband pain. Anyway, apart from that, we went to Europe in September, had a fantastic time and did loads of videoing, really really good and I used a small GoPro 11 Mini, the Hero 11 Mini. Uh, I use that for talking into in the morning, telling you what was going on at the end of the day, what had happened, and this that you there. And I was going to accumulate all that footage along with all the footage that I used. Anyway, it turned out shite, and I mean shite. So I sat on the footage for quite a while, thinking, what can I do with this? And uh, just the world fell out of the arse because just with one thing or another, it wasn't just that, don't get me wrong, but I just had enough and I, nah, fuck it, I thought, I'm, I'm deleting it and it wasn't rage, it was just my disappointment in myself which I think everyone has a, an issue with self-confidence and uh, self-criticism I deleted the whole lot 
regrettably now, don't get me wrong, but nevertheless, what's done is done. I've deleted everything, all because of this footage. Anyway, I digress. Uh, yeah, so I went to uh, France, Belgium, German, Lu Germany, Luxembourg, um, Switzerland, Italy, Austria, then back round again. And it was fantastic. With more weight on the bike, on the back end, because we went camping, the front end was even higher, because the back end sits down lower, which exaggerated the, uh, Jesus, look at the state of this, it's like some. It exaggerated the headlamp aim, and uh, yeah. And not only that, th and this is the other part, which is extremely irritating, is the suspension, has been bouncing, it's doing this all the time, fluctuating, da 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 like that. And it, it seemed to get worse as it got hotter, like obviously the suspension's working harder the more you ride it, so the oil's getting warmer, the oil's probably getting thinner in viscosity, and uh, it's exa exaggerating the issue. 
<coughs> so I kept on finding that my suspension was bouncing more, head bump aim was going up and down more, and uh, it was a nightmare. And I've <coughs> tried to adjust it. I'm, I'm not a suspension person. Anyway, I've set it more or less as to where I think it should be now, but I'm still not happy with it because when it gets hotter, it bounces more. So we'll see where this guy's going. Thank you very much. Oh, what a lovely day. Anyway, going back to the suspension, I want them to have a look at it. And I'm a bit of a bugger for um, <coughs> running my bike quite well on fuel. I'll run it right down, fill it up, run it right down, fill it up. I don't see it having a problem with that. However, I put it in the garage when it was a low on fuel to get it out. When I filled it up, it was still saying it was low on fuel. The send unit in the tank must have stuck because it had nothing surrounding it, I suppose. And uh, so it's been sticking every now and again. And it's only this, well, well we, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, went on a long ride. It actually started working properly again. But nevertheless, I still want to have a look at it, make sure everything's right. So, them three things pardon me, headlamp aim, the suspension, which I find really annoying, and uh, the fuel tank sender I want to have a look at. So while I'm up there, I want to actually try and have a go on the uh, 890 Duke as well, the Naked 890. I really fancy having a go at that, see what it's like. Unfortunately, like I said, the temperature's one degree, so it's not as if you can go scratching around the dales, is it? Or I should say the Lake District. But nevertheless, I'll just go around and have a have a play and see what it's like so that's where I'm heading now Kendall uh, and that's basically my uh, my first video back I deleted every single video I had absolutely every one and you could say well why why did you delete it all well I'm not being funny some of the videos wasn't really represented as to what I wanted to do and I don't want to be I don't want to be in a pigeonhole that I just dick around a lot. I do, don't get me wrong, but uh, and I'll probably do, still do the same sort of stuff, but I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to um, do less dicking around if you know what I mean. See if we can get one up here. There you are, that's what you do. I'll just roll away and then you can start me back up. Hey. It's not very hard, is it, to get past a, a horse without spooking them, is it? You've got to have a bit of mutual respect between two road users, despite they don't pay any tax and they shit all over the road. And quite often, and I mean this, quite often, the riders are very rude, but she was very pleasant, so thank you. And I think that's a bit of a mutual respect as well. She realised that I'm not terrorising round, speaking her horse, putting her in danger and the horse in danger. Anyway, it's a bit icy. Oh yes, oh. I think it is a bit icy. And to top it all, my visor's steaming up, despite I've got a pin lock. I do like the sound of this exhaust. Very nice. Just cautious on the bends. I'll run through as well of what I've done to the bike since I've had it. I've had it since June. Um, so as soon as I got the bike, I put on a decap pipe. 
so a pipe from fuel exhaust to take away the catalyst hence why it sounds a bit raspy it's got a standard front pipe standard rear pipe just a decap pipe in between which I can slip on and slip off whenever I want to I've still got the catalyst and it sounds very nice and the bike looks standard which is great just to look a bit louder um, what else have we done uh, I opted for heated grips heated seat as an option uh, got the full tech pack so it's got cruise control etc um, which is really handy I do like the cruise control on this bike um, I fitted a, an AXP uh, plastic like molded sump guard it's really quite thick it's about 10 mil thick and it looks apart it's orange go with the bike Ext aesthetically it looks good a bit nice and uh, yeah I like the appearance of it <clears throat> not that I would go much off-road uh, but it looks the bike looks good I've also fitted the KTM pannier scaffolding on the back and uh, it doesn't look as ugly as the uh, 1200 or the 1250 scaffolding what you get with the GSA it looks neat and tidy when you have no panniers on and the pannier set I've gone for is Moscow M-O-S-K-O Moscow um, can't really call them now it's like Outlander I don't know something like that and a wheelie and uh, and they're a soft luggage expandable but they are extremely good and uh, I also did bought for Christmas a uh, backpack Moscow backpack uh, a rucksack basically and that looks pretty good as well very well made a little bit on the expensive side in some respects and certainly when you buy them because you're buying them in England you have to pay an import duty when you do get them so you got to factor that in when you actually make your order but you are going to pay pay a little bit more uh, but they do look good <coughs> and they were brilliant on holiday uh, very functional uh, lots of pockets so highly recommended what else have I done to the bike Oh, the heated seat because my bike is the 12 not 12 the 890 Adventure R it comes standard with a one piece seat and when you opt for the electric seat which is obviously an additional extra you can only get that in the two piece so you've got to buy the electric seat and the pillion seat as well but the pillion seat because I'm not carrying a pillion I've just gone for a standard pillion seat, no electric, so it's not heated whereas the one I'm sitting on now is heated and it's warming my testicular very nicely just wafting through the warmth, it's quite nice so it makes a massive difference to your comfort in winter um, oh, what, oh yeah, that was the other thing as well this screen here even though it's the R, you might think it's the S because of this screen I've gone for the letterbox screen and uh, to try and give you a bit more protection and in some ways it does but in some ways it doesn't because as you can hear I'm still getting a lot of wind noise, a lot of buffeting this bike is nowhere near as good as wind protection as a GSA in fact but it's also not a 20 gram bike either so there you go anyway bought that update here I'm just coming into Long Preston and uh, I'll catch you around so bye bye from me Captain Pugwash Rides please subscribe thank you very much for the people that have still subscribed even got I've, I've had no videos on uh, I've not even got any back catalogue on like I said I deleted them all I thought bugger it gonna have a complete 
clean down of, of everything so I've deleted everything so anyway thank you very much for subscribing so please subscribe there will be more stuff coming out soon <sighs> just get, get your self confidence up and you know stop being I'm not saying pitiful but stop being so I can say critical of yourself stuff you what other people think think positive that's my idea it's January new year new start same channel new content so thank you very much please like subscribe and uh, I will catch you around bye bye for now bloody hell I don't think it matters what you have today I think you need to have heated grips heated gloves and probably a muff and who doesn't like a muff over the hand a pair of muffs this time of year really keep the the wind chill off your hands you just look like a dick though but if it's practical why not